Hi guys, I hope the last test didn't destroy your, your confidence in biology too much. Um, so we're starting the next section and hopefully you've got the hang of this thing by now. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is unit two, which happens to coincide with chapter two. So you'll see uh, some correlation between them. Um, so the sections, the units that I have like 2-1, 2-2, don't necessarily mean chapter two, section one, chapter two, section two, and so on, but you'll be able to find the same stuff in chapter two. All right, so um, in order to talk about the main idea of chapter two, which is organic molecules, we need to understand a little bit about the atoms and molecules that make them up. So I'm hoping that this is just review for you. Um, in eighth grade or physical science, you probably, whoops, sorry, probably should have gotten a, a good understanding of this before. So just in case you haven't, here's a little review. All right, first of all, atoms, like we said, make up pretty much every single thing in the whole entire universe. Actually, they do make up everything in the universe. Um, and atoms are, are made out of smaller things called protons, neutrons, and electrons. So atoms, basic unit of matter, and I have a picture of an atom over here, and you can see d some of the different pieces. I've, I've got it labeled right here, electrons, protons, and neutrons. And so a proton, you can think when you're pro something, you're for it or you're positive for it. And so these are little positively charged particles. So in here, they're all the little blue things. And then we have the neutrons, uh, like Jimmy Neutron, yes, I know. Uh, neutrons are neutral, so they have no charge. So you can see the red ones over here have no charge associated with them. And the, together, the two of these make up the nucleus. Now I know that sometimes it gets confusing with the nucleus of a cell, um, but the middle of the atom is also referred to as a nucleus, but slightly different function. And then we have the electron, which is negatively charged, and these are always floating around the outside of the nucleus. Not necessarily in perfect little orbits like this, but that's usually how we draw it, because it's nice and simple. So, atoms are made out of protons, electrons, and neutrons. Protons and neutrons in the middle make up the nucleus, and the negative electrons around the outside make up um, the electron cloud is what they call it, but they float around the outside, okay? So fairly simple, made out of three parts, and you got the charges of them, okay? Now, an atom by itself really isn't that exciting. Well, some of them are, like sodium and uh, lithium. You throw them in water, they'll explode, so that's kind of cool. Some of the gases, chlorine, fluorine gas, well, you know, you sniff them and you'll die. So that's kind of cool too. But what's really cool is the fact that when they get together with other atoms, and uh, make compounds that their structures and their, their properties completely change. So for example, sodium in A is um, highly explosive, a big boom, whenever it touches water. And then we have chlorine gas, which will pretty much kill you if you um, inhale any of it. But when I put it together, what do I get in ACL? Yummy, yummy salt. So it's kind of interesting how we can take two different atoms, but when we put them together in a compound, they, com they turn into something completely and utterly different. So a compound is just any substance that's formed by the chemical combination of two or more elements. These are su some examples. No, you don't need to write these down or memorize every single one, except for water. Water's probably a good one to know. Um, but uh, it gives you just kind of a good idea as to the different types of shapes that these guides can make. So we have H2 hydrogen. O2 oxygen, so the oxygen we breathe is actually two atoms of oxygen stuck together. N2, which actually makes up 80% of our environment, our atmosphere, is two nitrogen stuck together. And then we have chlorine gas, uh, the Cl2, that's bad stuff, we don't like that. Nitrogen oxide, bad stuff. Water, good stuff. Nitrogen dioxide, not that great. CO2, hmm, good for plants, not so good for us. So you can see by taking individual atoms and then smushing them with other atoms, we get all sorts of neat stuff like this. So even things like um, jewelry, compounds of silver and alloys, they are all made up of mixtures that turn into compounds. Okay, so take a couple atoms, throw them together, squish them together, you get a compound. Now, when, how, how do we make a compound? Because if I've got these atoms with their electrons around them, they usually don't like to give away their electrons. So how can I make two atoms stick together? Because if you think about it, an atom is positive in the middle and totally negative around the outside. Now, if I stick another atom, right, and don't you dare do that cat, sit down. My cat's gonna sit on my lap. 
If you take two negative things and put them next to each other, well, just like two magnets of the same charge, they're gonna repel each other and so they're not gonna wanna get together. So how is it that I can make two atoms stick together if their nature is to repel each other? Well, it has to do with the fact that they all want, uh, I don't know if you remember the magic number of eight electrons in their outer shell. We call that the octet rule, octet. So oct means eight, and that's because pretty much every single atom out there, except for the exception of hydrogen, helium, lithium, and a couple of the smaller number ones, they all want eight. And the only way that they can get eight is if they beg, borrow, and steal. So if two atoms get together by stealing each other's electrons, we call that an ionic bond. And so down here, this one right here, you can see what's happening. He's got an electron he's not necessarily wanting. He's got an electron he likes and really would like one more to complete his collection. And so it's kind of like, you know, when you guys are trading Yu-Gi-Oh cards or something like that. You know, he's got an extra one of these and he needs that one. So here, how about I just take that from you? Okay, no problem. <clears throat> so what happens is that this one donates or gives his, okay, really it's stolen from, his electron to this guy. So now this guy's totally happy because he's got the extra electron. And this guy, he's happy because he really didn't want that card anyway. So they're both really happy. Well, now this one, since he lost a negative charge, that makes him more positive. This guy gained an, an another electron, which makes him more negative. So if you know anything about magnets, the positive side and the negative side of a magnet stick together. So that makes these guys stick together very similar to magnets. So you can kind of think of ionic bonds as magnets. Okay, now covalent bond, this is where you know, they each have a card they want, and so they decide to share with each other half the time. So this one, ionic bonding, is very much a sharing of electrons. So he's got one, he wants one more. He's got one, he wants one more. So what they do is they come together and go, here, how about we just share them together? So you can have this half the time, and I'll have it half the time, and then we'll all be happy. So this works out for everybody. <clears throat> now, since there isn't a slight uh, positive charge and a negative charge because now they're sharing pretty much molecules have no sorry my cat is pushing my computer pretty much they have no charge so whereas ionic bonds make things that have charges covalent bonds usually do not have any charge whatsoever so molecules like sugar um uh don't really uh well they dissolve in water but if you try to cook um yeah, forget it. No, it's too complicated. Just ig ignore what I just said about sugar. Anyway, sugar is a molecule. That's all you need to know. Okay. And then there's a last kind of bond that you may not have heard of. It is a bond-ish kind of thing, um, but it's called a hydrogen bond. The reason because is hydrogen, when he forms a, a bond with oxygen, he gets his electron stolen from him most of the time. So that makes him slightly positive. And then oxygen, who's hogging the electrons most of the time, makes him slightly negative. And so the water molecule itself kind of becomes like a magnet. So I've, I've got these positive sides over here and I've got negative sides over here. This one has some positives over here and some negatives over there. And just like magnets, positive and negative are gonna hang out with each other and stick to each other. And so they tend to just be near each other. This is what accounts for the surface tension of water. This is why in graduated cylinders, water likes to climb up the side of the graduated cylinder is because water likes itself so much that it just wants to hang out with it. Uh, we're gonna do a little experiment called drops on a penny where we take a penny and you start putting drop, drop, drop of water and you're gonna guess how many it can hold. Well, you're, what's gonna happen is that the water is gonna form this little bubble over the penny, and we call that surface tension, and so then eventually it's gonna explode, but it's really neat to see just how much water likes itself and will stick to itself. So, dear Lord, cat, stop that, sorry. So, uh, hydrogen bonding is very much like a magnet too. This is more of a bonded magnet, whereas these are, um, kind of like weak magnets that they can very easily fall apart. Okay, so now we got the bonding. Now, a little bit more about water, because water is mostly what we're made out of. It's where most chemical reactions occur, so it's kind of an important thing. So water, 
uh, we know is H2O. And uh, so there's a fun way of saying it to make it sound like a scary chemical is dihydrogen monoxide. And the di just means two, hydrogen means hydrogen, mono means one, and oxide means oxygen. So two, hydrogen, one oxygen, dihydrogen monoxide, uh, or DHMO. And so you, it's funny, you put warning labels, uh, contains DHMO, uh, known to cause suffocate or drowning and all these kind of things. And so it's kind of funny. Anyway, my weird sense of humor. So water, like we said, the oxygen and the two hydrogens are kind of like a magnet in the fact that they have some positive sides and some negative sides. We call that polarity. So that's this thing right here. Like a magnet, having a positive and negative side. So water is polar because of the fact that it's slightly negative on one side of it and slightly positive on the other side of it. That makes it sticky. Not sticky like tar, but sticky that it likes to stick to other things that are positive and negative. So salt, you put salt in water, it dissolves. Why? Because salt has a positive charge, chlorine has a negative charge. So the oxygen grabs onto the, well, the negative side of the water grabs onto the sodium and rips it apart. And the positive side of the chlorine, or of the hydrogen, grabs onto the chlorine and yanks it off. And so now, what you're left with is a whole bunch of little sodium ions floating around and a whole bunch of little chlorine ions floating around. So water is very much like a magnet in the fact that it's got a positive and negative side and it likes to stick to things. Well, okay, and that, that's what makes water so cool as what's called a solvent. A solvent is something that can dissolve something else. And so we know we can put pretty much anything in water, except for oils, uh, and it will dissolve. Well, water is also very sticky to itself, like we said. We call that cohesion. So think about when you're cohesive with a group. You guys bond together. You stick together. So cohesion means that you're attracted to yourself. Oh, I love you. I love you. Look at that. And so they are cohesive to each other, that they stick to each other all the time that they can. Now, water is also adhesive or adhesion which means that water also loves other things. Oh, I love you too. Oh, you're so nice. Okay, anyway. And so that's what accounts for the meniscus that we see on a graduated cylinder. So down, I'm gonna get a lighter color so you can see it. Down here at the bottom, that's where we, we're supposed to read it whenever we use graduated cylinder, because that's the water level right there. But if you notice, the water is climbing up the side of the glass, why? Well, because it loves, this is glass right here, and so he loves the glass, and he's going to stick to it as well. So he's sticking to himself, and he's sticking to the glass as well. So that's what makes water so cool, is that he is both cohesive and adhesive. Here's another way of thinking of um, adhesion, is uh, an adhesive is something like tape or band-aids. Um, so if you look at a Band-Aid box, it'll say adhesives on there. So tape and Band-Aids are sticky, right? And it, they stick to other things. Tape sticks to your skin. Tape sticks to paper. So that's how you can remember adhesion is that you stick to other things. So cohesion, cohesive group, adhesion, adhesive tape, sticks to other things. Okay, next. Now water is usually, well, we drink it when it's by itself, but water is... is um, like I said, a solvent for lots of different things. So water has lots of different things mixed in it. Water is usually found in mixtures. The fancy word or definition for a mixture is anything that's made up of different compounds not chemically combined. So uh, my little snack mix here, okay? It's a mixture, it's trail mix, but yet it's made up of M&Ms and almonds, and I think those are peanuts and cashews and dried gross little raisins. So that's a mixture. They're made out of each individual little thing that's not chemically combined. Okay, this M&M &M is not chemically combined to this cashew. You can separate them. So another thing you can think of is that mixtures can be separated. Okay, so there's mixtures all over you. Your frosted flakes with raisins, that's a mixture. Now water, when we make mixtures out of water, we call those solutions. And so a solution with water as the solvent is called a solution. Now, what is this word solvent? Solvent means the thing that does the dissolving. So that would be water. Water is a solvent. And then we have something called the solute, which is the thing being dissolved. So, you know, as a kid, you like to make Kool-Aid. You take the powder and pour it into water. The powder is the solute, 
and the water is the solvent. Okay, so here's a little cube of sugar right there. Solute, the sugar, thing being dissolved. Solvent is the water, the thing doing the dissolving. Together they make a solution. So solvent plus solute equals solution. Okay, so water, very, very important, especially for all the processes that go on in, in the body. Now, when we have water solutions, we usually measure their pH. pH is a measure of how acidic or how basic something is. So what does that mean? Well, we know acids, like we know that lemons and grapefruits are very acidic, and that soaps and cleaning detergents are basic. So what does it really, really mean? Well, acidic or an acid just means it has lots of H pluses. A hydrogen atom has a proton in the middle and one electron around the outside. No neutrons, just a proton and electron. So if I steal an electron away from it, all that's left is a plus, is a little proton plus. And that's what a hydrogen plus is. So a hydrogen ion is just a hydrogen atom with the electron stolen from it. So if you have a whole bunch of these floating around in your solution, we call you an acid. And we usually say that on the pH scale, you have a pH of somewhere between zero and 6.9. The closer to seven you are, the more neutral you are. Zero would be ridiculously strong acid that would eat right through your skin. It'd be scary. Uh, if you watch um, Breaking Bad, they tried to dissolve a body with hydrofluoric acid, which is like a pH of 0 0.00001. So it's pretty nasty. Now a base, on the other hand, is one that has a low concentration of H pluses. So there's hardly any of them. And on the pH scale, they run between 7.1 and 14. So Drano, that stuff you're not supposed to touch, that's like really super high. Sodium hydroxide's another one that's pretty nasty. And then we have right in the middle, neutral, which means it has equal concentrations of the H plus and something called OH minus, which if you notice, an H plus and an H OH minus, if I stick them together, what do they make? Hey, look at that, water, H2O. So the more H's I have, the more acidic. The more OH's I have, which means the less H's I have, the more basic I am. Now, if I'm right in the middle, pure water, then I have equal concentrations of H plus and OH minus. So really what I, I just want you to know, acid, lots of H pluses. Bases, not so much. Neutral is about right smack in the middle. And just some basic examples, like you should probably know lemon is acidic. You should probably know water is neutral. You should probably know like ammonia or um, anything that cleans. If you notice, all these are cleaners. Cleaners are usually on the basic side. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to know from that one. Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, look at that. That's it. Yay, you're done. Woohoo! Okay, so um, all this corresponds to 2-1 and uh, a little bit of 2-2. So if you want any references to go back and look in the book, or anything, just take a look at those uh, chapters and sections and that will help you out. All right, so uh, tomorrow we're gonna do a little activity. Like I said, we'll do the lab drops, drops on a penny to see uh, how cohesion and adhesion work together. All right guys, I will talk to you later, bye.